What's going on, FG fam? Welcome to another episode of the Miami Marlins franchise. It is episode number 26 here on MLB The Show 21. We have some action for you today. We are going to be taking a look at actually a couple of player locks down in AAA. A couple of guys playing pretty well that we want to take a look at. Also, we're going to get a lot of critical situations in, and we're going to get a full game against the Atlanta Braves, a division rival. Get a chance to see all that and more here on this episode. Don't go anywhere. Starting off the episode, we get to play the Brew Crew again. They got no Ramirez. The answer was no last time, and it is no again, as our Marlins are able to take the down yet again, 6-3 to three this time. Then an 8-4 to four win after that. Sixto gets a dub. Good to see it. Max Meyer on the mound here in this third game of the set, and it is scoreless all the way through the top half of the ninth inning. Here is Lucas Sims in the bottom half, striking out an opposing batter. His strikeout right there gets the first out of the bottom of the ninth, and then a big strikeout on Castro as well. Lucas Sims with a shot to strike out three in a row, and he does. Tyrone Taylor will take one low and in. First strike three. They will bring out Brent Suter in the top half of the 10th inning here as this one goes scoreless into extras. John Birdie with one out and the runner on gets this one past third base. Unbelievable. Might they score that an error? We are not sure, but John Birdie on a nine game hit streak. So they do score it a hit. Here's Mike Trout at the plate. He's a little angry that he got away under that one, slams the bat down on home plate. But that will be the second out. Here's Eloy Jimenez with runners on the corners. And Eloy just gets under this one a little too far. That will end at the top of the 10th. We go to the bottom half. Lucas Sims still striking out some people as he freezes Yelich on the up and in pitch. Then Keston Hira goes down on the slider away. Two straight strikeouts for Lucas Sims. He struck out five already. Here's Kyle Schwarber, and this fly out into center field will be taken care of by Mike Trout to end the 10th inning. Continuing this battle into the 11th, still scoreless. Javi Baez taking it out to right field. This one is caught in deep right field. We got a tag up attempt to third, and he's in there safe. It's Eloy Jimenez. So with the leading run on third base. Here's Bobby Bradley with a drive to right. It is gone out in right center field. Goodbye. Bobby Bradley's fifth of the season traveled almost 400 feet and will put the Miami Marlins on top two to nothing. They have a chance here to close this one away and get a big win in the Midwest out in Milwaukee. It is Craig Kimbrell, his 17th appearance here. He's 13 of 15 on his previous save opportunities. He's been very effective against righties, not so much against lefties. He does get former Marlon Jesus Aguilar swinging. Then Jacob Nottingham, he almost lost that one actually in a stolen base over to third. So Nottingham still up there, dribbling this one on to second, thrown on to first for the second out, but Milwaukee brings home their first run of the game and cuts it in half before the strikeout, the big strikeout of Chris Bryant. What a job by Craig Kimbrell to close this one down despite giving up the runner that was free on second and bringing him in. Bobby Bradley, player of the game with two for four, a homer for two RBIs. That two run shot, no doubt, the play of the game. Lucas Sims picks up the win, two innings, five strikeouts, didn't allow a run. Brent Suter's going to get handed the loss. And now we take a look 
at a triple-A game. We've got a player lock opportunity here. Norfolk Tides coming in at 11 and 9. They're doing a little dance. They're looking to get to 12 and 9. Looking to send our Jumbo Shrimp down to 8 and 12 if they can. Nicholas Boucher, four starts on the season. He's 2 and out with a .96 ERA and a .86 whip. Want to see how he can do as well as take a look at our man out in the outfield, J.J. Blade. See what he can do. The real-life Miami Marlins prospect there making a nice defensive play out in right field for the out. Then up at the plate in the bottom half of the second. He's got a 308 average right now, but it's about to get a little worse because this wasn't the best day for J.J. Blade. There it is, a pop fly out into left field. Then in the bottom of the fourth with nobody on. This one dribbled on to shortstop. That would be thrown on to first and get him out as well. 2-0 game for the Tides into the bottom of the seventh. Here's Blade taking this one. Oppo field out to left. That one is caught as well. Just couldn't get anything going there. And then in the top of the ninth out in the outfield. A nice play here getting under that one to end the top of the ninth then he would have an opportunity in the bottom of the ninth and a diving stop did not prevent Lede from getting on the bag so a 2-1 game here Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp with an opportunity up at the plate this one dribbled on and there is the out and that would end it 2-1 Norfolk Tides come away with a really closely contested game here they get the win on the road here against our Jumbo Shrimp. Nicholas Boucher is saddled with the loss. He went six innings, only gave up two runs, only struck out three, though. Adrian Cruz gets the win. He went eight and two-thirds, only giving up one run with seven struck out. Olander was one for three with a double. Bobby Robinson with our solo RBI. And Richie Hawkins, not too bad either. We continue on. We got another critical situation opportunity. Mike Trout's on third. Josh Hader is the pitcher. And Michael Conforto is the South Bend shovel slammer, if you get that reference, as he slams the crap out of this thing out to center field. 428 feet. It is his seventh homer of the season. I don't know how many walk-off homers it has been. If somebody wants to count and be smart and put that in the comments section, not only will I call you a smarty pants, but I will also say you a real one. But there it is, Michael Conforto with another big time homer. Now this one, not quite a walk-off. Craig Kimbrell's gonna have to shut the door down. He's 14 to 16 on save opportunities. This will be his 18th appearance. And he gets Ramon Urias swinging on the up and in fastball. So that's one away in the bottom half of the inning. Here's Tyler Flowers dribbling one on to short. Javi Baez charges it and throws on to first for the second out of the bottom of the ninth. Last potential out here. Willie Castro right on to third. And Brian Anderson makes a nice play to end this game. Manager Don Mattingly. Starting this team off the right way as the Marlins score three in the top half of the ninth to win this thing four to three. Mike Trout, player of the game, he had a triple, an RBI triple. Guillermo Marquez picks up another win. He pitched an inning, giving up a run, only gave up two hits. And Josh Hader, unfortunately, saddled with the loss. Kimbrell gets his 15th save on the year. Conforto with another bomb yet again. He was only one for three, but he had the most memorable hit of the game, a two-run shot. Trout and Bradley with the other RBI. Syndergaard started this one. He went seven, gave up a couple. And then for Milwaukee, Bryant, Aguilar, and Urias with the RBIs in this one. Yelich stole a base, and Francis started this one. Six and two-thirds, he went. Game one against the Braves gets one, so here we are in the second game of the set. Hoping to win this series here, this three-game set, at least take two out of three. Mike Trout, Michael Conforto warming up together in the outfield. They have been catalysts of this offense this season. And it is Sandy Alcantara, who has had a very surprisingly great start to his season. 313 ERA, he's 3-0. But something's got to give, because Mike Soroka is 3-0 as well. And he has a 267 ERA with an even better whip. Here's Michael Conforto hitting this one up the middle into center field with two on. That's going to drive home a run and leave runners 
on the corners here in the bottom of the first as the Marlins take the lead, and it's Javi Baez driving home another run with a ground ball down to third base. So still two on with two outs, but it is now bases loaded after a walk, and this one up the middle back to the pitcher will take care of it. And Mike Soroka done after giving up two runs here. He's finally done in the first. Here's Mike Trout with a slammer up the middle, and it will just get over the center field wall. Goodbye. Solo shot for Mike Trout, his eighth home run of the season. And the Marlins extend their lead to 3-0 off of the solo shot. So Marlins doing what they had some trouble doing so far in this franchise mode, and that is taking down the Braves seemingly with ease. There's another one going over the left field wall, and that's Bobby Bradley who's been hot the last couple of games. A two-run shot for him. His sixth of the year, and that's something that had to give at the start of the game, has been given on Mike Soroka, and that is a pounding. So it's 5 nothing. We go to the top of the sixth inning, and here's where Alcantara starts to kind of go haywire every once in a while. There is a double all the way up to the wall, a one-out double. Now with two away and that runner on second. This is a misplay by Conforto out in right field. Sun got in his eye, and that is where the Braves will score their first run. It is an RBI triple for Ronald Acuna Jr., his second triple of the season. We go to the top of the ninth, and here is an opportunity for the Marlins to take this one down. It's Guillermo Marquez on the mound. There is out number one in the top of the ninth. After a walk, this one is hit dead center field, and that one will be caught out there for the second out of the inning. So now, last chance, it's an away slider that will get him, and Guillermo Marquez has shut the door. Alcantara is happy, gave up one run today. Two big hits, a couple, a double and a triple back-to-back -back got that done against him. Dansby Swanson with that double, Acuna with the triple. Only five hits total for the Braves, three of them against Alcantara. Soroka taking a big loss. He went four innings, gave up five, and Trout is the player of the game with a solo home run earlier. So Acuna with a triple and an RBI in this one. Soroka, of course, taking that loss as ERA balloons to 358. So going up almost a whole nother point. Trout and Bradley, of course, hitting home runs for us. And we get another critical situation here against the Atlanta Braves. Trout is on second. And this time, Conforto will not be hitting the ball over the fence for a walk-off home run. So with Conforto out, we've got to rely on some others. Here's Brian Anderson, and a chopper down the third baseline is taken care of. And the Braves do come away avoiding the sweep as Max Fried ends up getting the win here. He also gets player of the game. Eight innings pitched, two earned runs, six strikeouts and five hits. Sixto Sanchez picks up another loss yet. A.J. Minter gets the save for Atlanta. Mike Trout hit another home run. He also had a double with two RBIs total and a run scored. Cronenworth was two for four with an RBI. Good to see him actually getting some hits. Acuna went one for four with a double and an RBI for the break. We move again into triple A ball. Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp now at 11 and 12. They're playing the Norfolk Tides again, who are 12 and 11. We're gonna take a little look at another prospect for us. And this prospect going to have to bat against Derek Haller, who is Two and one with a 4.44 ERA, and we're looking at Ben Guillen. Guillen has started off the season really well, but he hasn't started this game off really well as he strikes out to end the top of the second. Into the bottom of the sixth, Guillen looking to make a really nice play, turning a double play here in the bottom of the sixth to end the inning. To the top of the seventh, Norfolk up four nothing, and Guillen gets jammed and he will get thrown out at first base here in the top of the seventh. So we move to the top of the ninth. No hope for the Jumbo Shrimp to win this game. They're down eight runs. It would have to start with a big Ben Guillen hit, and that is exactly what he does not provide. So he is thrown out. Ash Laser can't believe it. 
and the Norfolk Tides get an 8-0 win with two frames of four runs. Haller goes 3-1 with the win. Our boy D.L. Hall, who we've acquired this offseason, five innings pitch, he gave up four runs and six strikeouts was all he was able to attain. For our Jumbo Shrimp, Bobby Robinson was one for four with a double. Rolandi Baldwin had a double. So did Sterling Olandere. So taking a look at where the stati statistical things stand right now, I can speak. Michael Conforto batting 311, 245 for Brian Anderson. He's not hitting as much, but he is hitting bombs. Just not really when I'm hitting with the team. 301 and nine homers for Mike Trout. Somebody's got 10 bombs. Zed Javi Baez, eight for Eloy Jimenez, six for Bobby Bradley. He's got a nice little hefty chunk of RBIs as well. Pitching Max Myers at a .84 ERA. Really want to see what he can do in the future here on this team. We're going to be taking a, a deeper dive into Max Meyer. Might even watch a CPU-CPU game in which he starts because I really want to see what he can do. And then as we look at Triple A, a lot of guys playing pretty well. Blade still batting well. Ash Laser batting really well. I've got to get him some more at-bats, though. So we'll see if we can do that in the next episode as well. Maybe check him out, see how he is performing. And Hernandez actually doing really well, too, 387. So a lot of the users doing great. Nicholas Boucher is pitching well still. Just didn't do as well as I would have liked to see him do in this particular episode. The Marlins are, however, 23-6. and six. What an incredible start to the season they have had. They are five and a half games up on the 17-11 and 11 Phillies, who would right now really be giving the Reds a run for the NL Central and would be in second in the NL West as well. The Phillies are leading the wild card right now at 17-11, and the Marlins are five and a half games in front of them. As a matter of fact, the Phillies might be winning the AL East, the AL Central. And the only one they wouldn't be winning is the AL West. They would still be second place there. That is how good the Marlins are doing right now. They are just so very close to the best record in baseball, right up there with the Dodgers, who are 23-5 and so far in the season. And the Jumbo Shrimp are six games back of the Charlotte Knights. At least that's a different team leading in AAA, but hopefully our AAA team can pick it up. Next episode, we'll likely take a look at the AA opener, which is coming up soon. And like I said, we're going to take a look at this man, Max Meyer, who has a .84 ERA. I will likely just do CPU, CPU on that and just kind of see how it plays out. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments section below, how that might look. Do you have any predictions for how that start for him will go? Do you think we'll win our double A opener? Let me know in that in the comments section below on that one as well. Continue to drop likes on all these videos. Thank you guys so much. If you want to become a part of this, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. Make sure you stay up to date on this franchise mode. Links to the script to the Discord and the Twitch are in the description below. And if you want to see more franchise, click right here to see some more franchise. I feel you face somehow.